Good afternoon and welcome to our webcast on pediatric transport and immobilization. We're really glad to have so many of you join us today. My name is Jerry Sosha, Director of Marketing for Furno, and we're broadcasting to you live from the Furno Experience Center. The Experience Center is a simulation environment where we can recreate many of the scenarios that you face every day out in the field. We have a full-size ambulance box, roadway, stairways, and many other platforms that allow us to recreate these situations. If you'd like to come and see for yourself, contact your local Furno sales representative, and we'll be happy to bring you out. Now, before we get started, I have a few items of business to take care of. Uh, our session is going to last about 20 to 25 minutes today. You can see and hear us, but we can't see or hear you. So please use the chat feature in the lower right-hand portion of your screen to send your questions in, and we'll answer those questions toward the end of our broadcast. My guest today is Jim West, product manager. Jim, how are you doing? Good, Jerry. How are you? Doing good. Glad you could join us today. Jim, we get a lot of questions on pediatric patient handling. And before we get started looking at equipment, I thought you could give us a little bit of a framework and understanding for some of the research and studies that are out there on this topic. Right. We do get a lot of questions, Jerry, because it's not a situation that EMTs and paramedics deal with every day. A key thing to remember is that there are no national standards that regulate the transport of pediatric patients in the back of an ambulance. And while there are a lot of studies and position papers that, that provide guidelines, they're good tools for you to work with your local medical director and your local, uh, that help set your protocols um, so that you can develop a comprehensive policy for transporting pediatric patients. Great. Now, Jim, can you talk to me a little bit about some of the studies that are out there? Right, absolutely. Uh, the, the first that you'll see is the crash protection for children in ambulances. That, that was a, pretty much a groundbreaking study that really was the first or one of the first to take a comprehensive look about protecting children in the back of an ambulance. And while some of the, uh, the equipment has evolved since that, that study has come out, there are a lot of, uh, there's a lot of useful information and a lot of things that you can use there to help develop your protocols. Uh, the second study is from the Association of Air Medical Services, and that's actually uh, not a study, but more of a recommended practice. There's a really a lot of good information in there about setting, uh, transporting children in certain, certain and different scenarios, um, and it is designed for ground ambulances as well. And as you know, uh, NHTSA, they set uh, car seat standards in FMVSS 213, and that also uh, helps uh, set standards for transportation of pediatric patients in automobiles and light trucks. But in 2010, NHTSA kind of realized there, was, uh, there, there may be some area for improvement and uh, further refinement there, so they put together a working group. And from that, they, uh, they developed five scenarios. Great. Now, I do want to let everyone in our audience know that we will be sending you an email after this session with links to these studies. But Jim, could we focus again for a minute on the 2010 NHTSA working group? I understand coming from that, they had identified five situational categories for pediatric transport. Can you walk us through these? A absolutely. The first scenario is for a child who is not injured or not ill and needs to be transported. The second is a child who is ill or injured and whose condition uh, does not require continuous or intensive medical care monitoring. The third is a child whose, con uh, whose condition does require monitoring and um, intervention. The fourth is for a child who requires spinal mobilization. And the fifth is for a child who is uh, transported as part of a multiple casualty uh, situation, such as there's an accident, the mother's injured, and the child needs to be transported with the mother. Great. Jim, that's a really great framework for our conversation today. Uh, I was hoping you could answer one more question for our audience. As we look at what is the definition of a pediatric patient? How do we define that? Is that based on weight? Is that based on size? Uh, we define it by weight. Uh, so 0 to 20 will be an infant. Uh, 20 to 40 would be a toddler. And 40 to 100 would be a child. Great. So again, we have a really great fame framework from the, the NHTSA working group with the five situational categories. Right. We would like to take that and actually simplify it into two broad categories of equipment. We have pediatric patient transport equipment and pediatric patient immobilization equipment. And Jim, could we talk a little bit about the transport equipment first? A absolutely. The first product, uh, this, this is a cap EMS captain's chair that you'll see in most ambulances that are out uh, on the street today. This is a product made by Emergency Vehicle Seating, EVS. Uh, and this is a standard captain's chair that actually has 
a child seat integrated into the back. And so this way you can safely transport a child from 20 to 50 pounds, and if you don't need it, you fold it back up, and it is a place just for your EMT to, or paramedic to sit to treat the patient. So this is a really good permanent solution Correct. if you want something integrated into your ambulance. Correct. What if you're looking for a more temporary solution? A product that Ferno offers that is a child seat um, is the PD Pal, and as you can see, it folds flat, so it's very easy to store. That's an issue that you have with uh, car seats that you buy from Walmart or, or uh, Myers or anything like that. Uh, they're difficult to store. The PD Pal stores flat and can quickly convert into a, 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 a car seat. And this can go onto a captain's chair, it can go onto an ambulance cot, and it can actually even go into a vehicle rear or forward facing. It can accommodate uh, children from 0 to 20 pounds rear facing, 21 to 40 forward facing, and it meets FMVSS 213 as a car seat. Great. So again, a, a good permanent solution integrated into your ambulance, a temporary solution. Now, these solutions work great for a patient who's alert, who's uninjured. Right. What if we have a, a pediatric patient who's been injured and needs to be restrained to a cot? Right. A great product that Ferno has introduced a number of years ago is the PediMate. It is a pediatric restraint device that is designed to quickly attach to a cot. It has been crash tested to 20 Gs, so it's crash stable. Uh, it attaches to the, uh, to the stretcher uh, via three restraints, one around the backrest and one each around the mainframe. It's a vinyl material, so it's very easy to clean, and it rolls up and stores very compactly. It's an ideal solution for transporting a pediatric patient from 10 to 40 pounds. Great. And again, Jim, I see it attaches across the backrest here at one point, and then we have restraints on each side as a connection point to the cot, and then we have a five-point restraint harness for the child. I, absolutely. It, it's an ideal solution in that you can very quickly train your, your members to, to apply it and, and uh, have the uh, patient attached and, and secured uh, safely. And this will easily move with the movement of the backrest? Absolutely. So if the patient, uh, if the patient needs immediate medical, medical care, you can lower the backrest down so you can treat the patient. Um, in normal transport mode, you would do it with the backrest up. Great. So again, we have good solutions for transport, uh, permanent solutions, temporary solutions for an injured child on a, on a cot. These are great for what we defined as a, a child and a toddler, but what if we need to transport an infant? A great solution is the, for transporting non-critical neonate patients is the baby pod. The baby pod attaches to a stretcher. It can be used in a ground or aircraft, um, ground ambulance or an aircraft. Um, it is crash tested to 10 Gs in five directions, um, and, it, and it is an ideal solution for transporting uh, non-critical neonate patients. Uh, Patients. And I see here it attaches again through, it looks like, five points to the cot. Maybe we can show uh, our audience what that looks like from the top. How would a patient go into this? So you have two latches, one at the top and one at the bottom, and these doors open up. You do have access to the patient, to the patient through windows here, so you can leave them enclosed. It has a nice, soft vacuum mattress that can... Uh, uh, that, that uh, conforms around the baby to keep them protected. You also have two, two soft restraints. There's also a heating uh, unit that's, uh, that, that comes with to keep the baby's temperature warm. Great. So again, these are, are great solutions for transport of children. If we have an uninjured child, in, injured child, multiple sizes. What if we need to immobilize uh, a pediatric patient? What yeah. solutions do we have? Ferno offers several solutions for immobiliz immobilizing patient, depending on the customer's preference and the, and the patient's size. The product that we've offered for a number of years is the PD Pack. Uh, the, the, the thing I like about the PD Pack is, is that the board adjusts to the patient and not the patient to the board. You have adjustable color-coded straps, so they're easy to apply and can be put in the right place. Uh, you have an adjustable headrest that can move up and down and it has padding that can be doubled up uh, so that you can help maintain a neutral alignment. Um, the cover comes off very easily. It has marine grade plywood underneath, so you can throw this in, into the washer and you can keep it clean. Um, it comes with a storage case, so it has a very low life cycle cost. And Jim, I see this as it looks like a fully integrated solution. There's no additional parts or equipment that need to be purchased. Everything you need is in this solution. Yeah, absolutely, and it has integrated handholds that you can either use to carry the, carry the board or use these to attach it to the stretcher or cot. 
So this is a dedicated solution, but Jim, I understand we also have a, a similar solution that will adapt a full-size adult backboard. Right, absolutely. Another product that we offer is the MedKids Baby Sleeve. Now, the PD Pal is good for, for children from um, uh, up to 90 pounds, 20 to, to, to 90 pounds of PD Pack. The PD Sleeve is from 12 to 60, and this will fit over a Ferno, uh, any standard backboard, Ferno or another manufacturer, either 16 or 18 inch width. It's very easy, just slides over and you can Velcro it through the, um, you can uh, Velcro it around and then hooks through the handholds to tighten it down. It has an integrated head immobilizer and deceleration straps with restraints. Um, the unique thing about this, this piece of equipment is that it has an internal bladder that can be uh, inflated to help maintain neutral alignment and increase the comfort of the, of the child. And that's just a hand pump that inflates the Ab bladder. Absolutely, it's just like a B, uh, blood pressure uh, cuff uh, monitor. Um, the, other, uh, the other nice thing about this is that it, when, when, you're, when it's not in use, it comes off, it's easy to clean, you can wash it, you can fold it up, um, it stores very compactly. Great. So again, two great solutions for immobilization of children, of toddlers. What if we need to immobilize an infant? Is there a solution for that? Absolutely. Um, the last product is the Ferno Med Kids Baby Board. And this is designed for uh, infants 10 pounds or less. Um, it, again, it has an integrated head immobilizer um, with different sizes to give you a lot of different options um, depending on what the, the size of the baby or the baby's condition. You have deceleration straps and restraints built in. It also has the, uh, has the, the bladder uh, that allows it to, uh, to be um, inflated uh, to maintain neutral alignment and, and comfort. It can be restrained to a stretcher or actually fit into a, a transport uh, incubator so that the baby is safely secured in the incubator. And again, a fully integrated solution, all the pieces we need. Yeah, that, that absolutely. We, one of the things when we're designing pediatric products that we take into consideration every time is uh, f fully integrated and storage, uh, storage space. Great. So Jim, if we look back to that NHTSA document, the working group, and those five situational categories, there's really a solution to address every one of those currently out on the market and we're able to address transport and mobilization. Um, absolutely, and I would encourage uh, anyone who, who would want further information, uh, con you can contact your local regional sales manager or visit, visit Ferno.com. Great. Well, at this time, what we'd like to do is open up to questions uh, to everyone in our audience. Again, if you have a question, use the chat feature in the lower right-hand portion of your screen. I do see that we've had a few questions come in already. Uh, Jim, we have a question from John, and he'd like to know if the vinyl cot restraint, that was the PD mate, uh, if that's been crash tested. Yeah, it has been crash tested, crash tested on a Ferno cot to 20 Gs, so um, it gives you a nice, stable, crash stable environment for, for an infant. Great. See, we've got a, another question that's come in from Emily. Uh, same, same product, the vinyl cot restraint, the PD mate. Uh, can we use that on any Ferno cot, and can it be used on a striker cot? It'll fit on any Ferno cot except for the Model 28. It will fit on the Model 28Z, but not the Model 28. So if you have an older 28, it won't fit on that. But newer models, it will. With regards to the striker cot, we have designed and we have tested that, the PD mate on a Ferno cot. We can't make any claims as to how it will perform on other cots. Okay, great. Uh, we have another question from Chris. What kind of board is in the PD pack? And maybe we could answer as well. What kind of board is in the MedKids baby board as well? Yeah, the board in the, in the PD pack is marine grade plywood. So it's very durable. It's very easy to clean. And it's going to last for a long time. In the MedKids board, it is a, a composite vinyl material that, um, that, that is, again, is very easy to clean and will have a, have a long life. Great. Well, I don't see any other questions at this time. If we did not get your to your questions, or if you have more questions you'd like to send in to us, we'll be sure to get to those uh, later. Uh, we'll send you a response within 24 hours. We do want to let you know that we'll be having another webcast next Wednesday, September 6th, seven, uh, 2 o'clock Eastern Time. We're going to be interviewing Brian Fass of the Fit Responder. Brian will be here sharing with you uh, some of the tips and techniques he has for lifting and loading different types of equipment safely. At that time, we're also going to introduce our new Injury-Free program. Injury-Free is a training program that will be available through iTunes and through Android Marketplace. And for EMS, it gives you training on safe lifting practice, ergonomics, nutrition, health and wellness, and a variety of other topics. 
So please join us for that webcast, and we'll be sending an email reminder out as well. Uh, actually, I do see we had one more question come in. We'll go ahead and take that. Uh, Jim, uh, we have a question here. Uh, what is the weight limit on the PDPAL? The PDPAL is designed for uh, children 10 to 20 pounds rear-facing, 21 to 40 pounds forward-facing, so up to 40 pounds. Great. And it looks like uh, one more question coming in. And give us just a minute here. Ideas for a 30-pound child, no muscle tone, supine patient. Um, that's a tough one. Um, you, you have a variety of different solutions. As long as they don't need you know, spinal mobilization, um, you could probably use the PD mate. Um, if they needed to be immobilized, I would use probably the, uh, the PD pal. Or the, I'm sorry, the PD pack, so you can, you can lay them down on a, on, on a board. That's actually probably not a bad way to do it because you do have deceleration straps uh, built into the PD pack, um, and that will work from a child from 20 to 90 pounds. But again, I come back to um, we, can make re we can make suggestions, but it really comes back down to what your local protocol is. Uh, but the two devices that I, that I think might work in that situation would be either the, the PD pack um, or, the, uh, or the PD mate. And I think, again, that's a great, yep. great recommendation to make, again, is that you, we do want you to consult with your EMS director and make sure you're following your local protocols. So we would like to thank you for your time today. If you'd like to view this webcast later, or if you'd like to share it with a friend or with your agency, we will have a recording available on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and search Ferno EMS. You can also get more information on any of these products at ferno.com. You can email us at info at ferno.com, or you can call us at 877-733-0911, and one of our customer service representatives will be happy to assist. Again, thank you for your time today, and have a great afternoon.